Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Joey. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for joining the meeting today. Who's ready for some spring cleaning? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear too much excitement out there. It's always never fun when you're having to spring clean. But you know, it's never too early to start. Whether you're ready to move to Park Springs or if you're coming later, it's never too early to start. So I just want to wish everybody a, a good day and thank you for joining the meeting. Um, I do want to introduce our sales team at first so I can explain who they are, because that is who you start with first when you come to Park Springs. So we have Suzanne Baker, who's our senior residency counselor. Hello. I have Randall Hudson, who is our residency counselor. Hey there. And of course, Valerie, who is our wonderful assistant to Suzanne and Randall. And she put this meeting together. So thank you very much, Valerie. But this is our great sales team that we have here at Park Springs. Um, when you first come to Park Springs, you will deal with Randall or Suzanne or Valerie. And once you choose your home here at Park Springs, that's where myself, Joey, the move manager, gets involved. Um, per your contract, you have 90 days from signing to move here at Park Springs. And then you get me, Joey. I'm a perk. People say, how much does Joey cost? Joey's free. So <laughs> I'm just here to help in any way I can. Uh, I'm available seven days a week up until I go to bed just to sort of get you through the stressful situations. But what I do once you pick out your home at Park Springs, I go in, I get a quarter inch scale. I'm going to go in and measure all those walls for you for what you're choosing here. So that way, when I come to your home, if it's within my time limit of the seven hour trip, I will come and help you place furniture. I will measure your furniture so we can see all how it fits. Um, I also put together plans for you to contact people for charities, auctions, donations, estate sales, and just walk you through that process, getting you in touch with recommended movers who you're gonna to speak to later today. Um, I do have Rick, Kern on here from Kel, uh, Kellner Williams, who is a realtor that's going to be speaking with y'all. I have Roger Kurth, who is the president of Senior Transition. And I have some wonderful mem uh, members uh, that are going to speak, who are Gary and Meg Miller, so they can talk about their experience and uh, just sort of what they went through and how they felt if my services helped, if I was with them through the good times and the bad times. And um, so we will get their input shortly. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some downsizing techniques, um, and then we're going to let Rick speak with the realtor company, and then we'll come back to some more downsizing information as each person talks. But the biggest point thing I want to point out is when you are getting ready to move, the biggest thing is don't look at your entire house as a whole picture because now you've created a big stress for yourself. So I only want you to look at one room and stay in that room and focus on that task. So if you are in your living room and you're cleaning up paperwork, taking it to your bedroom, I want you to drop off that paperwork there and I want you to go back to the kitchen because when you jump from room to room, you're creating multiple jobs and creating a lot of stress. I know it's easier said than done because I've tried to teach my wife for 33 years now. And every time we take stuff to the kid's bedroom, I have to drag her back because I'm like, no, honey, we'll get to that later. Let's finish the room we're in. So it does, when you get organized, it does create a big difference to stay on that and put that different task off until another day. Um, I always tell people to go slow and steady. You don't realize how much you truly can accomplish in 15 minutes a day, uh, when you prioritize your stuff from going in and cleaning out a junk drawer to going in and throwing away your expired toiletries and cosmetics. Because you know, we've all been on those business trips or vacations and we're like, oh, let's collect the soap and the shampoo. Well, who really <laughs> uses that stuff? <laughs> My wife and I and kids, we have a basket underneath our bathroom sink. And a few years ago, we said, you know what, let's trash this. We honestly, Thought it was a good idea, but we everybody likes the shampoo that they use, so they don't use those little shampoos. So that's just an idea of somewhere that you can start. Start by throwing away that stuff that you collect on those trips, because it does ease up a lot of room and gives you that more organized look. Um, some people do like to have wall-to-wall -wall furniture, and that's okay. Um, I like to go into it with the aspect of open spaces is better, so it's more flowing. 
but it truly is what makes you happy. Um, a good deal too is every six months, you know, so you're not doing this all together at once. Go through your closets and go through your kitchen. The kitchen is the most important thing that I cannot stress enough to pare down that kitchen. Because some people, you can have 10 or 15 Pyrex dishes, two or three bread makers. I had people move in this week that I don't give names. She had probably 20 boxes of coffee that she's never touched. She now has no place to put all of this stuff. And a lot of people say, well, you know what? When I get to Park Springs, I may start making bread again. But honestly, you're not. You hadn't touched it in three years. You're not going to have time when you get to Park Springs because you're going to be too busy. You just think you're retired now. But when you get to Park Springs, ask Meg and Gary, that's over. Your social calendar is full as you want it to be. So your next adventure truly is fun to where you're not worrying about all that stuff. And although you're still entertaining, you're not going to be cooking the entire seven to 10 course meal because you're going to have members taking their stuff and you each are going to bring your own dish to join at the parties and stuff so you don't have to worry about having that mixer bowl or two or three different types of mixing bowls um, to do that i'm going to sort of skip over to rick for a minute and we'll get back to some downsizing talk but i'm going to introduce rick with kellner williams and let him sort of just talk about what's going on out there in the world Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure who's from Georgia or Atlanta. <clears throat> Excuse me, the pollen too is getting has been getting to me the last couple of days. So if I'm choking, that's why. Um, I am currently living in Decatur, which is about 15 or 20 minutes from Park Springs. And I'm happy to report that my husband and I actually just bought a house in Smoke Rise, which is basically right next door to Park Springs. So we will be moving I will kind of be your neighbor um, starting in, we're thinking about moving in May. We're doing some projects on the house first. But um, um, as he mentioned, I'm a real estate agent at Keller Williams Realty Metro Atlanta office. We're based here in Decatur and I service in town and east side of the metro area. Um, I've been asked to just talk about the real estate market in general for a minute or two. I don't want to take up too much time because obviously Park Springs is the number one reason you're on the on the call. And I will tell you, it's a wonderful um, community out there. I've been there a couple of times. Um, I have been in the Atlanta market for about 30 years. Um, this is where you're supposed to tell me, what were you, nine when you moved here? Yes, I was not. <laughs> but I've been here a long time. Um, and I'm sure you're aware, if you if you listen or read any news, um, it's all about mortgage rates. The Fed just you know bumped up rates yesterday. Um, you know, how's the real estate market? Honestly, it's all local. So when you hear these stories on CNN or wherever you get your news, um, it's important to, to remember it's really a local conversation and a local play and really important to have someone in the real estate world, a professional that's helping you. So you guys are in a little different position than some of the sellers um, that I work with that might be downsizing to another house or purchasing another house versus moving into a place like Park Springs. Um, I did talk just to talk about rates a little bit, just if you're interested. Um, I talked with several local lenders yesterday and today. Um, rates actually settled a little bit yesterday in the mid sixes for people that are buying. Um, obviously, for folks that are selling, that's not as important. But uh, so you know, the spring market here in Atlanta really kicked off a couple of weeks ago, even though spring officially started um, just last or I guess it was just a couple of days ago, earlier this week. Um, and folks are out. I mean, inventory is still very tight right now. Um, we actually, I talked with a couple of agents in my office yesterday, um, and we're seeing some multiple offer situations happening again, which if you remember just, you know, earlier last year, that was happening quite often. Um, it kind of calmed down a little bit, but it seems like it's coming back. Um, so as a seller or potential seller, um, I really think spring, summer is a great time to list your house. Um, and there's a lot of folks out there um, looking for some opportunities uh, to purchase. I'm working with some buyers right now that we just can't, we cannot find something that that is what they're looking for. So um, inventory is definitely still low. Um, 
And the good thing is um, it's, or I'm sorry, the, the good thing is when you're working with a local real estate agent, they can um, help you with, um, as Joey mentioned, what do you need to get rid of? What do you need to do to get your house ready? How are you going to price it? Um, you know, what's the timing looking like? Of course, it's going to make sure we, we want to make sure that it, it works with you and your schedule for moving into Park Springs. But again, being working with someone local is so important. And again, I don't know who lives in Atlanta or who might be moving or relocating to the market. Um, if you're not in Atlanta, definitely please try to find someone local that's familiar with your immediate area. Atlanta is such a large market and I focus in town and east side. It's a much different play or conversation than if you're talking to someone on the south side or over in Douglasville or wherever. So again, it's just very local and I can't say that enough. Um, as you've heard over and over, it's all about, um, you know, location, location, location with real estate. And it really is true. Um, so if there's any specific questions, I mean, I'm happy. I don't know how you want to to, to go from here. But I, I just definitely wanted to let people know that if you're get a little hesitant, there are a lot of buyers out there and they're realizing rates are not going back to the threes and fours anytime soon, like we saw a couple of years ago. So folks are realizing now, okay, we're in the sixes. I'm fine with that. What's my payment going to be a month? That's what we focus on. So as a seller, um, there's a lot of people out there. It's a good time to sell right now. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to you if you want to talk more, you know, offline. Um, I don't know if you want to, if I can drop my contact information in the chat, or if you just want to provide it yourself, just um, let me know how you want me to do that. Great, Rick. Thank you. We can, we'll give them the information when they request it. Um, and if you have questions for, for Rick, we will get to those later. But Rick, I do want to throw this one question out to you. So I, I run into members a lot that they say, oh, you know, our, our friend is a realtor. We've known him for 30 years and we feel bad to tell him no, not to sell our house. And what is your best advice? Because I tell them to say, you know, they are not from this area. They're not familiar with your neighborhood. So I don't feel they're going to be the right fit for you. What would be your suggestion on how they should go about telling their dearest friend that's been there forever that I really don't want you to be my realtor to not lose that friendship. Is that possible? Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, it's not just in real estate, but any industry, I think it's sometimes it can be a little difficult doing business with friends or family. So, you know, it could be that situation, but I would just focus on the, the, the locality. It, it's really so important. I mean, even like the house that we just bought in Smoke Rise, Obviously, I was the agent for myself because I'm a <laughs> licensed real estate agent. But um, if I wasn't, what I would do is find someone that focuses in that area. I mean, it's it's a you have to make sure that someone is on your side and working on your schedule and what you're looking for. It's it's really everybody knows multiple agents. I mean, I it happens to me occasionally too, where I find out a friend or you know someone listed their house or is working with a buyer's agent. I don't get upset about it. You know, there's enough out there. Um, and, and personality is important too. I mean, you might be friends with someone personally, but when you're working professionally, it could be different. So, um, you know, just something to think about. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Rick. Hey, and, and the biggest thing with downsizing is well, it's hard on a lot of people. So I think the biggest thing is to do, and I can't reiterate it enough is grab a friend. That way they can help you through this process. But I really need this friend to be a voice of reason. We don't want him to say, hey, Kay, hey, Kathy, you wore that in high school. Don't get rid of it. No, get rid of it. <laughs> so the biggest things I tell people is if you haven't looked at it, used it or touched it, then get rid of it. Let some other family create memories with your belongings. Um, sort of think about people go into it with, hey, I bought this table for $10,000 but you need to go into it with the headset of when it's going to real estate to an estate sale or an auction, you're not going to get that $10,000. Um, and depending on the type of furniture, you just need to go into it with a good mindset that you're going to make some money, but not what you paid for it. And it creates that memory for that new family. One for a family that may not possibly be able to afford that type of stuff. So this gives them the, ch the chance to buy your nice belongings to create memories with their families. Now, we all know there are people out there that have lots of money that love estate sales and stuff like that. That's a different story. But we try to stick to the positive to let other people create memories with your stuff. 
but it is important to have that friend or family member that is a voice of reason so they can help you to get rid of that stuff instead of talking you into keeping it. A lot of people do get carried away in, when they're looking to downsize and stuff and always know it becomes an emotional, an emotional journey because you're taking that time, you're looking through pictures and you're looking through you know, past memories and that's really hard on you. So if you could sort of go in with it, with that attitude of, hey, you know what, I've experienced this, this was a great time and just sort of try to move through that a little bit quicker. I know it is easier said than done, but for pictures, for example, you know, the best thing I could say is go digital with pictures or paperwork. There's lots of companies out there that can scan your documents for you. They can get this stuff into an external hard drive. Anytime that you are scanning stuff yourself, it's very important to know not to put it on a thumb drive or a disk because those just don't last as long. They get messed up. So the best device to put it on would be an external hard drive because they do hold a lot of memories and information and they are guaranteed to last a lot longer than a thumb drive or a disk. Can um, you repeat that again? It's best to put them on what? It's best to put them on an external hard drive because it's very durable, it lasts longer. Where when some people put like their family memories on a, a disc, a CD disc or a thumb drive, those are not guaranteed to last. You know, your disc, once it gets scratched, it doesn't play your stuff as well. And if you look at those little things that are called a thumb drive, those things sometimes break down within a year or two. So an external hard drive, is the best route to go to be able to put any kind of pictures or tax documents or, or documents that you can't seem to get rid of. You know, I had a lady that was going to bring a desk and I was like, why do you want to bring that desk? And she goes, well, it has all my paperwork in it. I'm like, well, when did you look at that paperwork? She was like 10 years ago. I was like, you don't need that paperwork. Just scan it. You know, there's so many, again, a company can do that for you, but I have turbo scan on my phone so I can quickly just take pictures of our documents and then stick it into our cloud drive. Uh, and that is something you have to get used to if you've not used the cloud drive for your documents. Um, but for pictures, for example, you know, who all has tubs of pictures in your closet or a crawl space? You know, when my children were little, I see Suzanne's hand raising. Um, when my children were little, they're 15 and 20 now, we used to show them those pictures all the time. You know, as they grow older, you just sort of stop getting into that tub. And what we did, this was in my master closet. We have two master closets in our bedroom. My wife has one, I had the other. And my, uh, my closet seemed to get all the extra stuff in it. Um, so what we did is we went to family and we said, hey, we picked out the pictures we wanted to keep. And then we asked all of our family, hey, who wants this? So we scanned all of our pictures in and then we got rid of all those pictures. So then you think of, I don't wanna throw away those pictures, but how many of you have a picture of a tree that you took a picture of in Africa? Or if you were in DC and took a picture of the monuments, scan those because how often have you truly looked at that? And now you have freed up space wherever you're holding these, this tub of pictures or belongings and you can create a new space. We created my closet and it's now our office. So instead of all these pictures and different little knickknacks that we were just putting away that we don't look at anymore, obviously I'm the one that lost and my closet's the office, but luckily my <laughs> wife doesn't have a lot of clothes either, so we just share a closet now. Um, but those are things to think about. You get into, hey, I have all these trophies and these plaques. What should I do with those things? Um, again, you know, you only hold and look at those things for so long. Um, especially with my oldest daughter. She was the one that had to do everything, horseback riding and pageants and all her little wonderful school stuff and her competition cheer. So what you do with those kind of things is just take the little plaque off the trophies, stick the little plaque in the, in the, in the envelope and dump the trophies. Because honestly, those trophies are probably in a closet somewhere or a box in your attic. So you can always keep the, the plaque that helps you remember, remember that stuff, but you don't actually need the big bulk product. Um, the trophies in the beginning of excitement and the plaque can be the memory of it. Uh, a lot of good things Is that I tell people. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. I'm gonna show my ignorance because I'm another generation. <laughs> okay, I know about thumb drives. I know about CDs. 
this external hard drive, what does it look like physically? So I mean, it's like, it's like a little metal box um, with a wire hanging out of it that you just plug into your computer. Um, I'm trying to think of something you may know. If you ever had a little portable DVD player? Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's a little bit smaller than that, and it's a lot lighter, and it just has a wire coming out the side that you plug it into your computer. And we even have a wire that we can plug into our phone to be able to download that stuff on both. So it is like if you went to Best Buy or Walmart and just asked for where their external hard drives is, but it is just a small device. Even some are even the size of a cell phone these days, like a, a bigger cell phone, I should say, like if you know what a Pro Max is. So sort of if you look at the size of, I don't know if you can see my phone. Yeah. External hard drives could be this size with just a wire coming out of it, but it's just a very tough, durable memory holder <laughs> um, it's hard you know because you can drop it you know you don't have to worry about it breaking and things like that so but definitely look up on amazon or walmart and you can just type in external hard drive and it'll show you a picture is part of what you provide like paring down your office like i got four file drawers which i've been doing pretty well now only one and a half of them are full you know good good but I mean, I've got paper everywhere, so. Yeah, so you, the biggest thing I would tell you there to find out what's important and why do you have it there. You know, I know there's some people that could have 10 stacks of paper on their desk and I may think, how do you find anything? But you could probably say, hey, Joey, it's in that top left stack and it's a four sheet down. Um, but you sort of got to get out of that mindset, right? So as yeah. I always, because my mom was like that and, and she knew where it was and that's how she liked to be organized, what she called organized. But sort of what I got into her mind, because I don't know from a child, I just, I was this way. I started rearranging my room every week and I was getting rid of stuff. My mom and dad loved me because they never had to clean anymore because I was the one going and downsizing every everything in their home. But the way we taught her sort of when she brought it in the, in the house is, if you don't really need it, you need to get rid of it right then. Like, don't save it for some later time in the road that, hey, I might want to know this information. Well, later down the road, when you are looking for this information, it, it's so easy, accessible these days with online that you can sort of get rid of that paper. But other documents that aren't something that would just come into trash automatically, you need to figure out how important it is to you. Um, like, do I really need that big file cabinet? How many times do you truly get in that file cabinet to look at your paperwork? So if you're still constantly working and your job consists of all this paperwork, that's a different story. But if you're just holding on to articles from things that you like or uh, taxes and stuff, like you only need to hold that stuff for so long that you don't want to get yourself caught up into just creating a whole bunch of paperwork of things you like or things you saw because you can always find that or get someone to help you relocate that stuff because it's also easily accessible now online. Hey, Joey. Yes. Is that uh, TurboScan you mentioned, is that an app for iPhone? It is, yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. And it takes very clear pictures just like if you're scanning it on a, an actual scanner bed. Um, keep in mind with that, obviously, on your phone, it's going to take longer than if you had a true scanning bed where you can get 10 things on there. Your cell phone is going to be one item at a time, but it does it does pick up that on your phone as if you just scanned it through the bed and it came through your computer. So it is an official looking document that's very clean and crisp. Uh, but if you go to the app store on your phone, you can just download that from there and have it and it, it keeps it and creates a file for you in the turbo scan file and, and and joey also does any size item I, I did some legal documents today which i couldn't do on my printer at work i was able to scan them on there and email them to a lawyer and it was so easy to do that kind of stuff and you can email it to yourself and save it that way yes great that is great news roger it, it does you can get a lot of stuff in there um and i think i said one document at a time but i think you can continue on until you're however much you want, because you obviously would want to put the same stuff in there together, but not a whole bunch of different things if it's going to different people. Joey, it's um, Kathy DeLeo. I'm, I'm not on the screen here. Um, hey, Kathy. What were you talking about? What's the name of that product, that app? The app, I, I did, I had to leave the room. It's called TurboScan. ServiScan? Turbo, T-U-R-B-O, TurboScan. Yep. 
And that's an app you can do on your computer well, sort of, or your or your yeah, I was gonna show you on my phone, but I really can't because it's too small. Um, but it's just called Turbo Scan. When you go into the app store, it looks like a picture of a scanner. But if okay. you start typing in Turbo Scan, mine I use free, but if you really want to get into it more, because I don't need I do a lot of my documents saving through iCloud or the external hard drive. Yeah. Turbo scan, you can get you can do more with it with a business aspect, you know, when you're paying that type of stuff for those fees. But otherwise it's free if it's just your normal so, day stuff that you can get rid of. So back up here. So you're suggesting all these documents and everything we're trying to solidify, I mean, get rid of out of our life and have it in one unit. Um, you're suggesting external hard drive. Now does the the iCloud take the same do, do the same thing. If it does. It document. does. Some people just don't like iCloud because you know you can't really see. You know, people say, "Hey, this cloud's up here." Um, it's always easy accessible. So if you're okay with those types of things, like we are, the iCloud is a way to go because you can purchase however many amounts you want, and it will always be there. Mm -hmm. External hard drive is if you really feel like you need to have something that you can touch. And that would be the route to go. But yes, if, you, if you're a believer in iCloud and that works, we believe in it. And it, it really is a good thing because my wife is also a photographer on the side. So when we go on vacation, we have like 3,000 pictures. <laughs> um, so she, we do take well advantage of the cloud because sometimes you just don't always have time to use that external hard drive. Um, so she'll, she'll download them on the laptop and then she'll move them over to the cloud. Well, of course, I'm from another generation also, and we have slides. Yes. Not photographs, slides, which is a whole, whole nother story to get those converted over. Yes. Yeah, so there are companies out there that will convert your slides over if you want. Um, and again, it's something, you know, that once you do that, I would ask a family member, hey, do you want to keep these? Uh, I know you don't want to hear, and it's hard to hear to trash something like that, but once you've had it moved electronically, and if you haven't truly looked at those slides in 10 or 20 years, why hold on to them when you can create another space for something else? Yeah, right. Yeah. Understood. Yes, yes. The big thing is just being able to let go, um, try to get out of the emotional aspect. You know, with one of my kids, it, it could be, yeah, let's get rid of it and put something else there. And the other kid is like, oh, but that was the first car you gave me. I don't want a new one. You know, so it, it, it is all about mindset to, to what you want to do there. But the big thing with getting rid of stuff um, is a donation basket. You know, try to collect 14 items a week to get donated, whether it be to, you know, Habitat for Humanity or an area, somebody in your area like we have that's called FODAC that helps disabled seniors or seniors with not much money. You know, you do have the Goodwill, the Humane Society, there's auctions and estate sales, but it's a really great idea if you can get at least 14 items donated a week to get sent off to charity because you'll be in a better place. Um, we did talk about going digital and we talked about uh, like that junk drawer, you know, in your home, just try to pick out that single drawer to go in there and start working on it 15 minutes a day to start throwing away all that stuff that you really don't need. I know the junk drawer is never ending. We have one in our home, but everything in that junk drawer now is in a Ziploc bag. And again, we go through it every six months. So we're in that junk drawer. It's just stuff that we truly need. Um, it's just stuff that we may only need once a month instead of something we just thrown in there and accumulated. Um, but when we do, when I do come to people's home, I do put a book together for you. It does give, give you a timeline of the things that you need to do. Um, it talks about stuff from throwing away your ex, uh, expired toiletries and cosmetics to canceling your utilities, changing your address. I'm putting you in touch with recommended movers like Roger Kurth, who will come in and fully pack your stuff, bring it to Park Springs to unpack it and put the sheets on your bed. And I'm going to introduce Roger Kurth now, president of Senior Transition, and I'm going to let you let him talk about some of his services. Roger. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, you may not know it, but there actually is an industry of people that are specialized in helping senior citizens get moved. Because for most of you, it's probably not like one of the moves you did when you were in the working world uh, in your 40s or 50s, where you move from one house to the other. Most of our clients are downsizing. 
Some of our clients have things that they need to get to their kids or their kids want to get. Um, a lot of them have things they need to donate, a lot of things they need to trash. Um, and, and as Joey said, the best thing to do in this process, which I hate to say, but the part you're going through now, between now and your move, is really the most difficult part because you are going through so much stuff for the house. But if you think about it, if you think about the last five years or so, you've probably only used between 25 and 35% of what's in your house. Your closet is probably full of a lot of clothes and probably half or less of those clothes is what you wear on a regular basis. So um, as Joey said, just take a bite-sized piece, go you know through one room, start in one corner of the room, work your way around uh, and try and work through that entire room before you move to the next. Um, I'll tell you the hardest parts to work on are the kitchen and the closets. And what I suggest there is again, take one cabinet at a time, work through that cabinet to come up with the things you do in fact use. If you've not used something in your kitchen in five years, you really need to justify to yourself, why do I need to move this to a new place where I'm probably not gonna use it ever again? Um, most movers charge by the hour for the job they do because that's the way we're regulated here in Georgia. And I don't like charging clients to move things that I know they're not gonna use ever again. And it's just a waste of time, money and space. Uh, you'll be so much happier if your new environment is not cluttered with things that you are not gonna be needing. So I always tell my clients, try to focus on the things you have to have then focus on the things you want to have until you really get the, the space to a capacity that is comfortable for you and the rest of it, if, unless you can find a good reason to keep the rest of the stuff, get rid of it. Um, I also suggest that if you need professional help, there are companies that can help with that. But I always try to get our clients to work with the non-professionals in their lives, like their kids. Have your kids, if you can, help you go through cabinets and cupboards. And a lot of kids, um, I'm, I'm sure if you're like me, You've got things in your house that may have come from your kids. So maybe your kids stuff that when they left, when they left the house, it may be things that you've acquired from your parents or grandparents or someone else along the way. If they aren't things that you enjoy and bring you, you know, happiness in your life, maybe that now's the time to not have those things going forward. But when you get the kids to come help you, let them work through those two tough spots with you, the closets and the, and the kitchen cabinets, and they can let you sit in a chair, they can show you what's there, they can kind of move things around so that all the things you want to move are at one end of the closet or in a certain number of cabinets in the kitchen, and the other stuff is either taken to a charity or at least set off to the side so that a charity can come pick it up, or maybe after you move, a company can come in and do a clear out and get all those things to a charity for you. Um, but while you're doing that, if you do have those things that the kids have left behind when they left, left the, the, the nest, Give them a deadline. Tell them, come get your stuff. You have until this date to come get your stuff. And then I'm going to get someone else to come get your stuff. My wife and I last year put our house on the market and we had two kids that have now moved out. The third one went off to college and we told all three of them, I, I, having a business, I've got a warehouse. I don't mind storing your things when we sell our house, but I don't want to store them unless you know you want them. And they came for a weekend, went through all parts of the house, and they only wanted to keep about 10% of the things that were theirs in our house. So 90% was able to go away really quickly. Um, so really to, it, use them to help you with your process, but also get them involved in helping you with their process of getting their stuff out of your house as well. Um, there's a lot of great charities that can use things. If an estate sale company is not able to help you or a consignment store does not have a market for some of the things you've got, we love to repurpose things through different charities. Uh, we have charities that we drop things off at as a company. We also have charities that come to our facility and get the things that other charities have turned down. Um, but as far as the move process, which is our primary business is the move, uh, we're a full service senior only moving company. If you need help with downsizing and sorting, we can do that. But typically for most Park Springs residents that are moving, we step in after Joey's come to meet with you and help you work up a furniture space plan. Uh, we'll come out and meet with you and talk about the small stuff and the process of having it, how, how do we get everything that's in your current residence to your new residence that needs to be moved. We can do a complete packing of all the small stuff, get the boxes and the furniture on the truck, get it on over to Park Springs and get everything in, place it based on that furniture place, placement plan that Joey's worked up. We will be able to unpack and put your things away back in the cupboard, cabinets and the cupboards and the closets. Uh, if necessary, we can hook up your TV and make your bed and hang your pictures. We've had clients that have literally moved without having to pick up anything themselves, and they were able to come into the new residence, sit in the recliner, push the button, the TV comes on, they're at home. 
So we can do full service. We can do less than full service. We, we're here to do it the way you want to get it done. And we will give you guidance along the way. If you've got questions about processes, we'll be happy to discuss that with you over the phone or come out and meet with you in person. But we're here to make it simpler and easier because again, it's not a normal, I want to move everything from this house to that other house. It definitely has a lot of more moving pieces. And um, last year we moved over a thousand seniors here in Metro Atlanta. So we've got a, got, a, got a pretty good history of moving a lot of people, getting it taken care of. Most of them are happy. Um, as Joey mentioned, there are people that do bring too much stuff to Park Springs. Um, I don't like it when that happens. He definitely doesn't like it when it happens because you don't feel like you're home yet when you're stuck with a bunch of boxes that you can't unpack because your cabinets are already full. So we, we will work with you to try and get you to do what um, will make you happiest. And um, you know, if, if it comes down to the fact that after the move or even during that process of the move, you can't get things to go away that need to go away. Uh, if the resources that Joey and Randall and everybody else have don't work for you, we can definitely step in and handle getting things gone for you as well. Great, thank you so much, Roger. And, and for those of you that are out of state, I also go through Roger as he has a sister network that he can put us in touch with people in your area. So we would still have, because I can't come to your home if you're too far away, I still put the book together for you. You still have me to talk to on the phone, can send me pictures of furniture measurements so I can still help you with that placement. But then we have Roger helping on that end to get you in touch with somebody in his sister network. So then he's working with those people to help you and get in touch with them. And then he and his local team and his team is amazing. They are always, always very respectful to our people, to our members. They do an excellent job and uh, they know I keep them on their toes, which I really don't have to because they know that if Joey's not happy, they're not gonna be happy. <laughs> uh, so they are very good at what they do and that's why we continue to use them. Um, yes. Um, hey, uh, so I did fail to mention, but we're part of a national association of these specialty companies that move seniors. So almost every part of the country, I think there's been two or three parts of the country we've not had a partner that is part of our industry that can help with things out of town. But we usually can find a company out of town that specializes in what we do to help with things where you currently reside. We can arrange to get your things transported from where you reside into Park Springs. And our company comes in and helps with the uh, getting everything in, unpacked and set up. So we have a way of doing that. Uh, and people are really shocked a lot of times how in, how efficient we can do it and also how inexpensive we, we can do it. We have some great resources. Um, I'm constantly uh, asking people to, you know, if they've got a, a referral from somebody else for, for the move or some other part, let me know how much it is. I'll, you know, be happy to save you some money if I can. Um, we know that money's not uh, all over the place. We don't all have enough money and we want to do it where you're not wasting your money, but definitely get it here efficiently for you and not take three or four weeks to get your stuff from Alabama to Georgia. We can get it here in a day kind of thing. So we have great systems to get those interstate moves done for you. Roger, it's Kathy DeLeo again. I have a, I have a question. Walk me through the whole packing process. How much packing should the individual do he, his or herself? And do you supply the boxes pre-packing? Pre our, our plan and our desire, and I'll tell you Joey's desire, if I have read his mind well enough over the last few years, he doesn't want you to lift a finger. He wants us to be able to come in and literally pack everything from your bathrooms, from your closets, from your kitchen cabinets, all your lamps, all your art. We can come in and usually for a local move here, we're going to come in the day before your move-in day, and we're going to spend between three and five or so hours packing everything that is going to be moving in. And in a lot of cases, we don't pack at all. We leave your bedding still on your bed. We leave enough stuff in the kitchen and the bathroom so you can still stay in your own house that night. And then on move-in day, we finish packing those last few things while the truck's being loaded. You make sure that everything's good. And then you go over to Park Springs and Joey will give you an incredible day of not being stressed about the move while our company manages getting everything on the truck and into your new place and start unpacking. And a lot of people, we can get most or all of their stuff unpacked on move-in day. Joey will set you up with a guest suite if you need, but if you, we've had some people that just did not want to sleep in a guest suite and we made it so they could stay in their own bed on the move-in day too. We just need to know what level of service and what your requirements are. And Joey and I will work out a system to make sure you are happy. Um, but we, we have systems and um, processes that make it efficient for us to do packing. And if you can get packed on a third, on a, on a Monday, moved in on a Tuesday and be able to be living on Wednesday, versus packing for two or three or four weeks 
and then unpacking for two or three or four weeks and having to throw boxes away and having to go buy boxes up front, it, it, it really is not that much more expensive to let us do it with our systems and our buying power on box cost and that kind of stuff. Um, for local moves, I'm going to toss this out there. We've only had one that exceeded this in the last few years, but most of our local moves into a place like Park Springs are going to be less than $10,000. And for some reason, people have 10000 in their head. They think it's going to be ten or more thousand. Most of them are less than 10000 mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a friend. She's in the process of moving there today from your moving company. And uh, they prepack so much stuff. And I kept saying, you will not insure the stuff that they packaged. Is that right? The state does not require us to cover any damage that occurs to something that a client packs. Exactly. And the okay. nice thing is, when, again, when we pack it, we pack it professionally, we unpack it. So if we pack things that are on your dresser, when we unpack them, they end up back on your dresser and you are ready to go to bed and have your stuff on your dresser. All right. I want to thank. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so the most important thing I can tell anyone is because we do have some people and it's mainly our out of town people um, and not necessarily out of Georgia, but we'll say four plus hours away from Park Springs. Um, they do choose a lot of times to unpack their belongings. So I can't stress enough what Roger said, you know, when an unpacking job is involved, you know, you're looking at two days versus four plus weeks. So I always recommend somebody to always, even if you're coming from out of town, to spend that extra and I'm just throwing a price out and you know we can't give a definite price until stuff is seen. It's definitely worth to spend the extra one to $2,000 or it could be more but I doubt it. Yeah. To get that unpacking done because you can get on with your life. You can get on with your new adventure because when Roger and them's team leave, you're set up and ready to go. You're just on a new set of walls. They put everything up for you and you can now leave and go have fun go out to dinner, meet all the new people. So that way you're not sitting there unpacking for weeks and weeks and having to break down all your boxes yourself. Um, I'm gonna introduce Meg and Gary Miller and I'll let them talk about their moves. They've been here for a while. They're a wonderful couple here at Park Springs. Um, it's been a while now, so I can't remember. I, I think they unpacked themselves, but I don't remember, but I'm gonna let Meg and Gary talk to y'all for a little bit about their experience coming in from Savannah. Right. I'll go first. Um, Joey was really, really great. He he was very helpful um, measuring every wall. And that was important for us because we were trying to decide what furniture to take. And then in coordination with that, what pictures to take and where they were going to go, where they're going to fit. Um, so that was that was really, really helpful. We came from Savannah. So uh, we were floored that he would come all the way down to Savannah and help us out down there. Um, there are a few things that I talk about when we host guests here, and that is that don't think about moving your entire living room. You know, for instance, um, combine things. We have things. We have things in our house here that um, were in other rooms, and they work just fine where they are now. We we have to cut in half what we were bringing. We're a little under 1,800, right, square feet. Right. So so, um, so we had to cut in half what we had. Uh, but it wasn't that hard, really. Uh, uh, somebody told me up here, be brutal. <laughs> and they, they were kind of right about that. So you bring things you really, really want. Storage is very important. For instance, I have a buffet for my dining room that sits in my living room, and it has storage in it for a variety of things. I have a a very old secretary that used to have books and whatnots in it. And right now it has some crystal in it. Um, in my living room, so it's totally different. Um, I have a server in my sunroom that has computer paper in it and uh, and the TV on top. And that was in my dining room. But um, to me, storage was really, really important. So uh, change your idea of what you need where. And we combine living room and and uh, our family room things together. I think we, somebody said, did you buy new furniture? I said, we recovered one chair and that was it. And they, things worked together pretty well. Um, and as far as what to bring, what can you not live without? What will you not live without? You know, there was this secretary is one thing I would not live without, been in our family for a very long time. 
and um, Gary wanted a big honking TV in the living room. <laughs> and I said, that's fine, but it has to go next to the secretary because that's the wall. And if they both fit, that's fine. But I'm going and I'm taking the, the secretary. I hope you'll come too <laughs> with your honking TV. But, you know, just be careful um, in the kitchen too, as, as Joey was saying, you're not gonna be having big dinner parties. If, if you have a apartment here that has a dining room, you still won't be having 12 people in, in your dining room very often. Um, and probably, probably never, maybe eight is gonna be the most you have. We don't have a dining room. We have a eating area, which is adequate. And I do have people over for, like I was just deciding, we wanted to ask to come for Easter dinner. I do cook on holidays if we're here and ask another couple to join us. But I also cut all of my china in half. I gave half my wedding china to my cleaning girl who was getting married and she was thrilled. And I'm thrilled because half of it went to somebody who needed it, the other half I have. Um, and I did that with several different kinds of china. So I have maybe three sets of china, but I only have half of them because that's all I'm gonna need. Um, as far as uh, pictures and that sort of thing, I went through my albums and I consolidated that. And, but I, I'm not I'm not so um, techni technologically uh, advanced that I can do what Joey's talking about. <laughs> Maybe one day. Um, what else do we get rid of, honey? Well, we got rid of half of our stuff, but yeah. But in, <clears throat> I, in I general, want, I wanted to mention something that the sales group helped uh, us a lot with. <clears throat> Once we came up and uh, we were told that their unit was available we came up to take a look at it like maybe some of you have possibly and it was unoccupied so it just you know bare walls and mm -hmm. it's not easy to determine for me at least how your furniture is going to fit into these rooms so uh, Susanna's sales group really did something that was really helpful to us they uh, arranged for us to see about five units that were furnished lived in furnished and were the same floor plan. And so Meg went around with her camera, with her phone, and took pictures of all the rooms. And then when we got home, we looked at those pictures and said, well, that our sofa would fit here, or this that will go there. And uh, that was really something that was very helpful. It gave us an idea of different ways to arrange your, your house, you know, um, because you have to think out of the box a little bit. And, um, we all tend to do what we've done before, you know, just well, that work there, but it doesn't have to be the same way. It can work completely differently in your new home. And the sunrooms are are just a gift from God. They're wonderful. Um, we happen to have a computer desk. We have a lot in our sun. <laughs> but it works right where we are right now, but it works really well. We have a computer desk here. We have a bookcase. We have a file cabinet. We have a server with a TV, we have an easy chair, we have a couple of other, another chair. A lot fits in if you camp them in a, you know, a certain way. They don't all have to go along the wall, for instance. You can have something in the middle of the room um, and just approach it differently. But um, Joey was extremely helpful in a lot of that. And so was Art, we happened to be using Suzanne. Suzanne was very helpful too. Um, we're we just you know we we didn't find it as hard as a lot of other people maybe because we just decided this was what we were going to do and we just decided to go ahead and, and do it and not cry over things that were in the past you know somebody said why didn't you bring your your plaques from holes in one right we all we both got a couple holes in one well that was then it's not now i don't care i don't have to show new people that i got a hole in one I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> I like so, that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> so things like that, you know, that are on your wall that were in the past that may not really be important for your future. Um, get rid of them. Like Joey said, get rid of them. I think I might have kept a couple of certificates or something, but otherwise we didn't. And we're not. We haven't missed anything, have we? No. No, we really haven't. <clears throat> I would like to give some kudos to Joey. Um, Definitely. We looked at a number of CCRCs and our parents were both in CCRC. Yeah. And we have never found one that provided that resource of someone no. coming and giving you all this we information. We were amazed. Yeah, we really we were. We were totally amazed. We were really blown away. Yeah, Joey does a great job. So that's a, a wonderful thing that 
that Joey, you do and Park Springs provide. It really is. It's, it's just fabulous. Well, thank you. I don't know much. if anybody has questions for us or not, but um, having we've been here two and a half years, just to let people. Know. I see the Quins down there. The Quins are Savannah. down there from Savannah too. <laughs> Does anyone have questions for Meg and Gary? They might not know what questions they have right well, now. Either. Yeah, you might not, but they're always here if you ever stop by or have a visit at Park Springs. Um, Meg and Gary are wonderful. They're not only our members, but a member is a true awesome resource to have because they've lived it, they've experienced it, they can talk about what goes on here. But like I was saying, they're not only our members. I feel they're my friends now and they're my second family. So thank you for your kind words. And I really do love what I do, and that's why I do it. Um, people always ask, if, do I not have an assistant? And are you not stressed? I don't really know how to answer that question because it's not really being stressed when you love what you do. You just sort of go with it, and it just continues to flow. Um, you know, everybody gets tired, but to me, I just don't look at it as being, you know, using the word stressed. Um, but I can't stress enough <laughs> to, you know, get rid of your stuff to downsize it, get rid of the things you don't need. Um, I'm not here to tell you that you cannot bring something when I come to your home. Um, however, if it's a 13 foot piece of furniture and we have nine foot ceilings, that's that would be it to tell you, no, you can't bring it. Um, but you just have to use, get used to my terminology. So when I say that's gonna be really comfy, then that really means it's not gonna fit and you're gonna have to go from there. Um, but the definitely the, the biggest thing is is just don't be afraid to dive in and start taking those tasks to get the downsizing process started. Uh, many people, Roger said it, Megan Gary said it, don't be afraid of the kitchen. It's going to be your biggest downfall if you don't go through that stuff because a lot of times, now there are some times that we have more cabinet space but there are a lot of times that you don't have as much cabinet space and you get here with your 20 sets of china and 32 coffee mugs the movers have nowhere to put it and it's now sitting all over your counter that's going to make you cry right and i don't want to see you cry because it hurts my heart but that's just the biggest thing is i can't stress enough even in my book i think i talk about it three or four times tear down the kitchen guess what in three weeks double check that cabinet two more weeks, take another look and clean out some more dishes. It's just really important to go through that stuff because you don't need 10 Pyrex dishes. You don't need 20 coffee sifter things. Um, so it's just really important to stay on task. Think of what's important to you, to what you want to bring. And the rest is easy peasy, you know, once you figured out what's important to you. And again, that's what I'm here for to help you. Just remember to try to create a schedule and stay balanced and focused. The more organized that you can get, the better off you'll be. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, Joy, I have one more thing to add. If you yes. do not have resources of people that can help you with that sorting and downsizing, there are companies like ours that can do it. But I honestly, if you've got resources, I would much rather talk to you and teach you how to do it yourself with your resources and charge you thousands of dollars to have someone come and spend three or four hours a day over a number of months to get it done. I, I, I would much rather have you do it on your own where you can make those decisions with some help of a family member or a friend or somebody else. Um, but we'll do that or I can find someone out of state to do that as well. Perfect. Yes, 100%, Roger. I agree. You definitely want your family or friends to help you first. But if you don't have that, we have people to get to you that can do everything for you from hold your hand to whatever it needs to be to get you through this stuff. Um, if nobody has any questions, I would like to just say thank you all so much for joining. It, it looks like, I'm sorry, Joey, it looks like Libby has a question. Libby, do you want to unmute okay. yourself there? Sorry, I started to see like hands start oh, to move. Sorry, I, yeah, okay, I can't see that. Okay. Hi, Libby, what's your question? Uh, a couple of things. One, wait, your service is you don't have it we don't have extra charge for no ma'am so there is there is no charge for myself um again i am available once you sign i'm available to you seven days a week every night up until i go to bed which is usually about 10 o'clock 
Um, and I do like to laugh. Um, on the weekends, my calls are a little bit shortened because I got to have a nap. <laughs> so I'll call you when I get up from my nap. But there is no charge. I am there, whether it's something just to get off your chest. Um, you know, I, I had a lady call me every morning. She would text me between two and three o'clock in the morning. Now, I'm asleep at that time. My phone's turned off. But, you know, it's on her mind at that time. And that's what I'm here for because she knows she's going to text it. Hey, Joey, I have this. Will it fit there? And we'll give the embarrassing details. Yes, I went the next morning. I sat on her toilet in her new place to see if my knees would touch this piece of furniture. Sure enough, it did. It was too big for the area. So that's what I'm there for. But she knew she got it off her mind. She could go to bed with ease. And she knew that I would answer her when I got up, took my dog out, got my kids onto the bus, and then I would call her back and then give her the answers later. Um, so I am there more than just to help you with the move. I'm there to help you to talk through things, even if it's to sit there and have a, you know, a glass of wine or a glass of Dr. Pepper for me on the phone. We can sit there and chat and just get off what's on your chest that you need to. And the other thing I wanted to ask, but talking about the turbo scan, I was just looking it up. And is that just for iPhones? Because it's referencing iPhones. Um, I am only an iPhone user. So I, I'm not, I don't, I can't tell you for other phones. Yeah, um, I don't think I can use it on my Android. If you have, a, if you have an app store on your Android, you should have an uh -huh. app store or something. If you look in there and type in TurboScan, and I can look it up too. I found it. I found TurboScan in the um, Google okay. Play Store for my Android. What so is it called? Where is it at, Valerie? Mm -hmm. It's called Google Play. Yes. Yeah. In my in my Google Play. Okay. My so Play. So no, it's it's store. usable. Um, it's usable. If you go to your Google Play on your Android. You will okay. Find it as Valerie just did. I just didn't know if it was available that way or just iPhone. Yeah. It is. So it is on the Android. I Thank also you. have a question in the chat. There's actually two questions. One of them is about, is, is this Zoom going to be available on our website? And the answer is yes. We record our Zooms and on our website, you can find it in a couple of places, but it's under the video gallery. You can choose the about tab and under that you'll find a video gallery. You'll find lots of videos there of little shorts, interviews, things like that. I think Joey may have had an interview um just different things there and then also you'll see a banner that says see our recent zoom events um and you can check out the zooms we've done this year we've done some park springs 101 we've done a wellness event with our medical staff and you'll find this one as well it probably will go up by the end of the week maybe beginning of next but yes you can find it there um the other question and i don't know if this is going to apply to rick or if it's going to apply to joey but the question had to do with an inspection um, how important is the inspection? And I'm assuming that's coming from a seller's standpoint. Is that um, from Doug? I don't know who Doug out yeah, from is. from Doug, yeah. Okay, okay, got it. Um, from, well, it's important on the seller side and the buyer side, honestly, because the buyer is going to use that to um, come back to you for any request for repairs or potentially a price reduction. Um, on the seller side, <clears throat> I've had some sellers that have done a pre-listing inspection, so they inspect their house before they list it, so they know what they may be running into um, when a buyer does put an offer in and gets the home inspected. So quick answer is yes, it's very important. And working with buyers, I would, I mean, 100%, you need to inspect that house. So um, it's really important. Thank you, Rick. Perfect. Hopefully that answers Doug's question. Does anybody else have any more questions? Oh, uh, hi, Jackie. Do we have to have somebody inspect the unit at Park Springs? So we, are you talking about like before you move in? Good question. It may be Susanna Randall. I'll, I'll speak on it a little bit and then I'll let Randall or Susanna or Valerie answer that. So you're not buying or purchasing a home for a deeded property here at Park Springs. So there is no inspection um, that is done. Now we do have state inspectors that come because we do have to get permits for each of our jobs. So when we're redoing the kitchen, the floors, the painting, uh, changing out the faucets, we do have to get permits through the county. And then we have each of those permit inspectors that come out and inspect our stuff. 
But as far as a true home inspection, you're not purchasing a home. Um, so that inspection is a little bit different. It is not involved with the actual member themselves. Okay. Now, Susanna Randall, if you need to add to what I said or Valerie, please do so. Yeah, I'm happy to um, add a little bit to that, Joey. Um, I think you you explained it well. Um, it does take about 13 permits every time that we um, go into a home to um, get it ready for a new resident. But just like Joey said, um, you don't take title or deed to the property. You own the rights to live in the property as long as you choose to live in the property without the burdens of home ownership. So if something breaks, needs repair or replacing, you're not responsible for that. All you're going to do is pick up the phone and call and they get it taken care of. And they've got a really nice, quick response um, to get you guys taken care of. So hopefully that helped to answer your question. What other questions do we have? Kay, I saw you move your hand, but I don't think you had a question. I think you're just moving around, okay. <laughs> Does anybody else have a question? Hi, Alice. I see you. Alice, you're still muted, so you're going to want to unmute yourself. Yeah, you're looking for the button. There you go. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, I, I didn't come in at the very beginning. Um, I have a question for Randall. Are you the people that I hear good thing person who I hear good things about for estate sales? Oh, <laughs> yes, I do. I do have an estate sale company, and um, Smoke Rise throughout Smoke Rise Indicator and part of uh, part of Atlanta. And and what is that called? Do 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 we? How do we contact you for that? Um, you can actually just give me a ring um, on my cell. I can give you a telephone number. Okay. Um, it's 404-323-1025. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And if you're real nice, maybe he'll give you a ride in a red Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'd want i'd want to ride my in the red lincoln to the park you got it you got time. it jackie let's get you let's get you out here <laughs> well if there's no more questions we're so excited you guys joined libby us. has I a question you. valerie I see you frantically <laughs> waving <laughs> i want to get uh Randall's number again, because I didn't have time to get a pencil to write it down. And Randall, maybe you can put it in the chat. Please. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, but I'll give it to you as I'm doing that. It's 404-323-1025. Uh, there we go. He just put it down there and, in the chat below. And if, I, and if I can't help you for any reason or time constraints, then I've got a list of um, people as well as Joey that we can refer out to you as well. But I'm glad to help and guide you in any way that I can because I've been doing this uh, for about 30 years. Good, because I'm looking to find people like for jewelry and things like that for resale, sure. jewelry coins and stuff. And so... I want to find some reputable sales. Yeah, I've done a good job with the. Uh, are interested in buying. Thank you. With sifting through those kind of people. So I got you covered. Thank you. Very good. I just want to remind everybody that we have an event, another event, a Zoom event like this. It's going to be taking place April the 13th. It is going to be a Park Springs 101 with members. So kind of our, our, what is Park Springs from a member's perspective um, and learning more about what it is to be here, to live here. Um, nobody says it better than the members do. Um, so that's going to be taking place April the 13th. Um, you can always check out our website for that information. And of course, register the same way. I have it here. It's at 1030. I had to check my notes. Also, if you guys are local to our area, please be on the lookout and constantly check out that tab. We're going to be doing a luncheon on May 10th here on campus. We'll do more Zooms as well, but we're going to start doing more things here on campus as well. We'd love to have you join us. So thank you so much to Roger, to Rick, to the Millers. We appreciate you guys participating with us, of course. And we hope that everybody has a wonderful day.